Today, I'm going to provide a strategic comparison between the three largest and most capable AIs in the market, of Microsoft Copilot, Google Gemini, and ChatGPT on which AI is best. This is an update to last year's Bing versus Bard AI comparison, since so much has changed in the industry since then. Now, I'll be following a similar structure to last year, with an overview of how each AI performs in each category, and then assigning a score at the end. In our analysis, we're going to focus on the free versions of each of these platforms, although programs like ChatGPT have premium versions. The majority of people will be using the free version, so our analysis will primarily focus on that, although we will add some info about the paid versions just for context. But before we get into the comparison, let's look at how the sector has changed over the past 12 months. As ChatGPT exploded in popularity this past year, it spurred competition and innovation within the market. OpenAI also continued to innovate on their popular ChatGPT model with the release of GPT-4, which offers improved reasoning and creative capabilities. OpenAI claims it's 40% more likely to produce a factual response than the previous version. However, this updated edition is locked behind a $20 a month monthly payment. Google launched Gemini, its successor to Bard, as a response to ChatGPT's wild success. It took advantage of Google's robust search engine to provide accurate information. Finally, Microsoft's Bing AI was rebranded to Copilot. It utilizes ChatGPT4 as a basis and incorporates features appealing specifically to coders. To start off, let's look at each AI's ability to provide accurate and up-to-date information. For this test, we're going to ask each AI, why did Silicon Valley Bank collapse? A similar question to last year. We'll look at how each model tackled the question and then the accuracy of their responses. First, ChatGPT. ChatGPT stated that Silicon Valley Bank hadn't collapsed and was instead a thriving bank specializing in providing financial services to startups, venture capitalists, and tech companies. Since ChatGPT, at least the free public version, is based on information from 2022 and earlier, it does not know about the SVB collapse. ChatGPT's subscription service, which uses GPT-4, has access to the information as current as 2023 and can use the internet to find new information as needed. And thus, when I asked GPT-4 the same question, it gave an in-depth answer with several causes. Google's Gemini, which prides itself on access to up-to-date information through Google's search engine, fares a lot better than the base ChatGPT. Its response was broken down into three specific reasons. Investment losses, deposit withdrawals, and other factors, namely a flawed business model and risk management issues. Now, these factors are correct and accurate, but I would much rather that it specifically mentioned the systematic rise of interest rates as a cause, but nothing it told us here was wrong, and therefore we can't be that mad about it. When asked about sources, Gemini cited news articles like the New York Times, Federal Reserve, FDIC reports, Investopedia, and Bloomberg financial analysis, as well as some academic studies. It even provided caveats as to how its information could be inaccurate, such as being potentially outdated in an evolving situation. Copilot portrayed the bank collapse in a timeline format, starting with background information before going into the causes and the impact. It provided information on what SVB was and why it was important for background information. The causes it cited were less insightful and less in-depth than Gemini's. It focused more on the immediate and surface-level causes, such as not being able to cover their deposits, while Gemini provided that information along with the fundamental flaws of the bank. Despite the lack of depth, Copilot provided direct links to its sources and in-text citations for further reading which Gemini only did when directly asked for it, and even then, some of the sources were missing. Overall, I'd give Gemini an 8 out of 10 for providing accurate information from reliable sources while losing some points since you have to specifically ask it for links. Copilot gets a 6 for linking directly to sources but not having entirely accurate or in-depth information, while ChatGPT gets a 3 since its information on the free version is out of date and you have to pay for the accurate information. Next, let's compare response speed. There are two main aspects of response speed that we'll look at how long it takes to start responding, and how long it takes to finish a response. In contrast to the last comparison, ChatGPT knocked response time out of the park. It started its response within less than a second, and over a variety of questions it averaged only 5 seconds to completely finish its response. This is only for the public GPT-3, and the new GPT-4 is known for its decently long response times, especially when it's dealing with tougher questions, but I've personally found that it's still plenty fast. Gemini had slightly longer response times, taking between 1 and 4 seconds to think before it started responding. 
its time to complete a response was also slightly longer, averaging in at about 9 seconds. Copilot is the only one that really struggled in this section. It wasn't too bad in starting the response, ranging between 1 and 5 seconds, but the time to finish took ridiculously long. It averaged over 30 seconds per response, with times ranging between 12 seconds to nearly a minute. As for ratings, Copilot is clearly last in this category by a long shot. Now, I'll be giving it a 3 out of 10 since even though its response times were abysmal, some of them in the samples weren't too much worse than the other AIs. Gemini at the middle of the pack gets a solid 7 out of 10 for having swift response times that are almost as good as ChatGPT. Finally, ChatGPT gets a 9 for having lightning fast response times. Next, we're going to talk about how they handle different complex tasks. The two ways in which we'll evaluate them are their creative writing and their coding abilities. First, creative writing ability. ChatGPT prides itself on its capacity to generate engaging and unique stories. It is, after all, a conversational chatbot. So does it really hold up to this image? To test this, I chose to ask it to write a short story about a knight fighting a dragon. ChatGPT did well at incorporating engaging aspects into its narrative by portraying the danger that Sir Roland faced. It also provided vivid descriptions of the scene, such as, quote, As Sir Roland entered the cavern, he was greeted by the scorching heat of the dragon's breath, and the gleaming eyes of the beast itself. Towering scales glistened like molten gold in the dim light, and its mighty wings stretched wide, casting shadows that danced on the cave walls." End quote. When asked the same question, Gemini told us the story of Sir Gareth, a knight who, quote, never considered himself a hero. Gemini incorporated a creative backstory for Sir Gareth and really fleshed out his character. It even decided to break out of the constraint of our prompt by having Sir Gareth team up with the dragon to fight an evil sorcerer that had been controlling the dragon all along. The actual fight was not as long or in-depth as it was in ChatGPT's story, but that was more than made up for by the intense and emotional scenes before and after the fight. In comparison to these two shining examples of AI storytelling, co-pilot Sir Reginald had a lacking story to say the least. Its description of the battle was solid, on par with ChatGPT and Gemini. It described them as equal foes until Sir Reginald gained the advantage as he, quote, waited for an opening and saw his chance when the dragon lifted its head to breathe fire. He threw his sword like a spear and hit the dragon in the throat." End quote. Despite this, it lacked the vivid scenery descriptions of ChatGPT or the dramatic emotions of Gemini. It didn't really do anything unique with the prompt, no twists or innovations that made me feel engaged as a reader. Its story was also less than half the length of its competitors. For this section, both Gemini and ChatGPT were neck and neck. But I'll give the win to Gemini for its graphic visual descriptions, unique twist, and emotional response of the story. At the end, it left me wanting to know more about Sir Gareth's story. So I'm going to give Gemini a 9 out of 10, only losing 1 point for technically not following the prompt exactly. ChatGPT gets an 8 out of 10 for its amazing storytelling, while Copilot gets a 5 out of 10 since it gave us a story that followed the prompt, but it just wasn't that interesting. Finally, let's see how each AI does it writing code. Now, I'm not much of a coding specialist myself, so instead of checking code I wrote, I asked each AI to write a piece of VBA code that I could then put into Excel and run. For those who don't know what VBA is, it's a coding language that works on Microsoft products. So ideally, this would give Copilot an edge. So I asked each AI to write code that would check if someone was a college student based on their age and their hours of sleep. If they were less than 25, then they would be a college student if they got less than 7 hours of sleep. If not, they were not a college student. If someone was above 25, then they were either simply old if they got more than 7 hours of sleep, and a YouTuber if they got less than that. ChatGPT did exactly what I asked and nothing more. It checked accurately if someone fit in the set categories, and output the results as requested. It also commented the code so you could understand what it was actually doing. Gemini had a few issues. Since it saw checking if someone was a college student based upon their age and their hours of sleep as slightly offensive, so it tweaked the results. Still, it did check if the inputs fit into the requested categories. In addition, it also checked if the inputs were actual numbers that the code could work with. This ensured that the code actually worked, since any invalid inputs would give an error message and rerun the code instead of breaking it. Finally, Copilot basically gave us the exact same code as ChatGPT. It worked and ran fine, but also lacked the input checks of Gemini's code. For this category, all three were pretty close, but Gemini came out on top for going above and beyond and earning itself a 10 out of 10. Copilot and ChatGPT both get a 9 out of 10 for doing exactly what the prompt asked, but still not technically providing the best code possible. So, which actually comes out on top, 
ChatGPT, Gemini, or Copilot. At the end of the day, it comes down specifically to what you want to use your AI for, and if you're willing to pay a monthly fee for it. If any specific aspect matters most to you, then go with the AI that did best in that category and test it for yourself. As for my recommendations, for a free service, Gemini clearly came out on top. Its access to accurate information, imaginative storytelling, coding capabilities, and fast response time all show that it's a reliable AI with competent reasoning abilities. Overall, it gets a solid 9 out of 10. The free ChatGPT came in next, earning a 7 out of 10. It's capable in every category except for getting up-to-date and accurate information, so it's perfect if you don't really care about current events and really value fast response times. Now, if you want more up-to-date information and want to pay for it, ChatGPT Premium is on par with Gemini at 9 out of 10. Copilot comes in last with a 6 out of 10. In every category you looked at, it was beaten by either ChatGPT or Gemini or often both. The only advantage it has is its free built-in AI image generation, but beyond that, there's really no advantage to Copilot. But the AI landscape is changing really fast, so if you want to stay up to date with everything that's happening in AI, make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.